Hello and welcome to Dubai Trains. And today we're gonna to add some squealing sounds to the layout. And this is actually take two of the video because I completed the entire video explaining the product, how to install it and how it works. And then we listened to it. And then I finished the video and later I ran some operations on my layout. And then I noticed something completely unexpected in how this product affects uh, my layout. So I really wanted to include that in the video. So let's just first start with the basic video I made and then we'll come to the conclusions at the end. And that's where this product comes in. It's a squealer from Iowa Scaled Engineering. And this adds squealing sounds depending on the train speed. Because if a train goes faster, it sounds different. And if a train goes all the way to a standstill, then it sounds different altogether again. So in this video, I'm gonna install this and let's have a listen. There's not a lot of material online about this, so I don't know what to expect really. I have an idea. And I ordered some other bits and bobs, bits and bobs as well. I ordered a second motion uh, detector or a sensor. Because like I said, this senses the speed in, and the yeah, direction doesn't really matter. So it senses the speed of a train, which is great. Uh, and then it changes the sound depending on that. So there's another, if we just look at the main product, there's another sensor that comes in the box with it. So this is the main unit where you connect everything to. And I think, yeah, there's some volume buttons on there. You can also put an SD card so you can record your own sounds if you have something very specific uh, near you and basically trigger any sound um, to that with these sensors. You can even uh, trigger, you can even trigger Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer when you pass by a Christmas tree. Um, we're not gonna do that, it's not Christmas yet. And then the speaker by Scaled Sound Systems and a big uh, yeah, speaker box baffle in there. This is gonna be great. The, the, they have, uh, he or they, I don't know how big that team is. Let's just say he makes great uh, products. In one of my engines, I have one of his speakers and it sounds great. I'm actually uh, getting quite a few of them any day in the meal now. We'll talk more about that later. Don't wanna drift off topic here. And then I got these products, relatively simple DCC power adapters. And what this lets you do is take power from your DCC bus. But first, where would you install this on the layout? This is a nice situation on my layout where I have two curves and I have two sensors, as I said. So you can place one sensor in each curve. However, I'm not gonna put it here because this is quite a dense, uh, well-used, set of track on the layout. There's an interchange right there. This is basically the lead for that interchange. And it's basically also the lead for this long track here and goes to the barge. So I have a lot of trains going up and down the section of track. And that's where one of my first points come in that if you're not sure if this is a product for you, you don't have to always squeal all the time. And I think that's also gonna be a bit much for me to be honest. So I'm gonna put it here where it's gonna squeal sometimes. So this is between the yard and the main switching area. So yeah, there is some traffic here, but not continuously like on a switching section. And if we look at the track, we have two curves, 90 degrees here, 90 degrees there. And I have two sensors. So I'm actually gonna put two sensors in the same section of track. So if I have one long train, it's gonna be continuous squeal all the way from one end to the other end. And if I have a short train or if I'm running light, it's gonna have squeal here and as we exit the bend, it's gonna fade off, and then it's gonna uh, come up and fade off again uh, on the second bend right there. So what am I gonna do now first? First, I'm going to hook everything up and just connect it to the layout. So what you see now is I'm drilling the pilot hole, as it says in the manual. One sixteenth inch, doesn't really matter to be honest, just anything that goes in between the ties. And then it says drill a 3 8 inch. And I thought it was quite big. I measured the sensor and I saw that I could get away with eight mil. So that's uh, that's what I use, I use an eight mil drill. And as you see now is you have to do it so, so slightly, also carefully. Um, Cause the top layer I have is cork and I have a very thin sheet of MDF underneath that. So the, the drill just at some point bites. And if you're doing this too fast, you're just gonna go straight through those ties. I'm sure of it. So that's how we drill the holes. Now this one is on my lift gate. So I have really easy access. It's real easy for me now to show you guys how to install this. 
And here is the sensor and it's a bit long. It's on the lift gate, so people might be walking. Well, it's still safe, but still people might walk here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna squeeze this into position and then probably take one of these pieces of lumber and just glue it here as a support, uh, also for the cables. And just make sure that if people do hit it, that they don't break this off. Um, now, what else are you looking at? Let me just zoom out for this one. Like I said, I have two sensors. One is gonna be there and the other one's gonna be there. And the main control unit is gonna be somewhere here, not really in the middle. And the cable for the sensor, although is quite long, it's a good foot and a half or something, maybe two feet, but it's just not long enough. So I had one of these wires left over of some, from some computer I stripped years ago, and I just joined them all up as good as I can. And just to make sure I don't get confused, the other end, I just quickly printed some labels uh, with the colors on it for which wire is which. Now in the manual it says, use a piece of paper towel or tapered shim to gently wedge into the hole to hold the sensor in place. I have something better than that. I have this, yeah, was it insulation foamy stuff to, to insulate your windows and doors uh, from, from draft and stuff like that. And this is super squishy. So that's what I'm using right now. I'm just gonna stick it onto the back of this print and then really squish and wedge it up in there. And here you see, I connected everything. I just put it on this box and pile of yeah stuff because um, it's just a little bit easier to connect the, the print, print, print when it's like this opposed to when it's uh, yeah upside down and under the layout. So here, this is the power supply, that unit. And then I just wired it up as per the diagram. Um, the second sensor, it doesn't really say how to wire that. So I think you can either just double it with the existing one or I'm just gonna use this terminal right here because it has the same uh, letter abbreviations as the other sensor. Then we have two buttons for the sound up and down. And that's a little bit while I set this up and get the train running. That's my tip two, in case you wanna hear the squealing sound, but you don't want it, you know, be too much. I just turn the volume down. I mean, in my vision, it's a scale train, so the sound should also be scaled. It doesn't have to be as loud as a prototype, that makes no sense because it's 187th the size of that. So the sound should be appropriate. So now let's have a listen as we pass over the sensor with the engine sound turned off. So now I want to cue both sensors at the same time in case I have a longer train. So I just got this angle, it's a bit of a weird angle. Um, the unit is actually down there, as you see. One sensor is there where that white booklet is, and the other one is here where the pink booklet, booklet is. Let me just get that train rolling. And I'm expecting to hear a bit of a, uh, a denser sound when we are covering both sensors at the same time. So here we go. So that was that. Let me do the same in reverse and just add a bit 
higher pace, probably one that uh, yeah runs a bit faster. This was a bit of a medium, slowish speed, I guess, for some folks. Here we go. See the blue light down there? So that means it is registering motion, but it just uh, very often decides not to play a sound. So that's the install. Now you know how it works and what it can do. And let me explain what happened and what this unexpected uh, result is and conclusion is from this product. Because this product makes your layout look bigger. So let me explain. When you design a layout, you want to create events. Events can be a tree, a bridge, a barge, or in a more uh, rocky environment, you have tunnels, uh, crevices, landfills, etc. that your train hides behind, travels through. This section of track, as you probably notice in the video, is quite uneventful. The only event there is, is this super, uh, super elevated track curve right here, which is very difficult to see and most people don't even notice. And I notice one, normally when I operate, you get a signal, you just depart there, and you know what, train, bye-bye, I'll see you back when we get here as it gets a bit busy. But now we have the sound, and we have two of the sensors, uh, one there and one there, this actually has become an eventful stretch track. So the squealer made my layout more eventful, and therefore it seems bigger. And that's just another factor to consider when deciding where to place the squealer. So there it is, the squealer from Iowa Scaled Engineering. Is this something for you, something you're contemplating to add to your layout? Let me know. It will be interesting to read what you guys think of it. I gave you some tips for if you're not sure, you can turn the volume down, or you can place it in a quieter section of the layout, or you can just place it on the main line and crank up that volume. I'm going to leave you guys with one final squeal, and after that, that's it for today, and bye-bye.